In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, let us bring to our mind our sins and ask God mercy and forgiveness so that we may become worthy to offer this sacrifice. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, our Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ of mercy, Lord have mercy. Let us pray. O God, by whose gift St. Francis was conformed to Christ in poverty and humility, grant that by walking in Francis's footsteps we may follow your Son and through joyful charity come to be united with you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Nyaiah. In the month of Nisan, the 20th year of King Artaziz, Artaziz, when the wine was in my charge, I took some and offered it to the king. As I never have be never before seen, been sad in his presence, the king asked me, why do you look sad? If you are not sick, you must be sad at heart. Though I seized with great fear, I answered the king, may the, God, may the king live forever. How could I not look sad when the city where my ancestors are buried lies in ruins and its gates have been eaten out by fire? I prayed to God of heaven and then, then answered the king, if it please the king and if your servant is deserving of your favor, send me to Judah, to the city of my ancestors' graves to rebuild it. Then the king and queen seated beside him asked me how long my journey would take and when I would return. I set a date that was acceptable to him and the king agreed that I might go. Ask the king further, if it please the king, let letters be given for the governors of the west of, west of the Euphrates, that they may afford me safe, con safe conduct until I arrive in Judah. 
also a letter from Asaph, for the keeper of the royal park, that he may give me wood for tempering the gates of the temple Sitada, and for the city wall and the house that I shall occupy. The king granted my request, for the favor, favoring hand of God was upon me. The word of the Lord. Let my tongue be silenced if I never forget you. By the streams of Babylon we sat and wept when we remembered Zion on aspens of the, that land. We hung our harps. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. Though there are, though, though there are captors asked us, the lyrics of the songs. Our deposers urged us to be joyous. Sing the songs of songs of Zion. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. How could we sing a song of the Lord in a foreign land if I forget you, Jerusalem? May my right hand be forgotten. Let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. My tongue may clave to my plate. If I remember you not, if I place not Jerusalem ahead of joy, let my tongue be silenced if I ever forget you. I consider all things so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus and his disciples were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens and birds of the sky have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, let the dead bury their dead, but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. Jesus answered him, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what was left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, we remember St. Francis of Assisi today. Do you know anything about St. Francis of Assisi? St. Francis of Assisi? Have you heard that name? Good. You, okay. They all heard the name Francis of Assisi. Yeah, St. Francis. Okay. So he uh, was from Assisi. That's a place. It's in Italy, the central part of Italy the Umbria region, okay. So I think he was born in uh, 1182 uh, in a wealthy family. So he really, because he was so rich, he could do whatever he wanted, a saying man, he could do anything he could do. But then also the people of the time, you have to you have money, but that doesn't bring you honor, right? So you have to do something special to be glorious in the community. So the main thing that those people of the time, because all those tiny, tiny kingdoms, they always fight. So if you are a soldier, if you are a knight, and then you fight, and then you defeat others, and then you make a big name for you. So Francis joined the uh, soldiers, 
and there was a war between uh, Assisi and uh, Perugia, the neighboring uh, towns or cities at the time. And then the Perugia team, they, they were really strong and they killed almost all the people from the Assisi team, Assisi uh, group, and uh, they spared only the rich, the wealthy uh, young men so that they can get a ransom for them, okay, because his father was very rich. He was a big uh, cloth merchant between Italy and France at the time, okay. So he ended up in a prison for almost one, more than one year. He got sick, and then that's where he uh, began to change his way of life. He got converted to the way of Christ, and then he got out, and uh, he would go around and preach the gospel, go to visit the churches and the gospel, but his father was really mad. His father wanted him to continue his business, but he just wanted to go, like, like just as Christ-like, the gospel passage today, hey, I have nowhere to go, no house, it's like the birds have, uh, you know, the son of man has nowhere to go. The foxes are okay, the birds are okay, but the Son of Man has nowhere to go. So he decided to embrace that way of Christ, become a poor person. So he went to places, he even actually went to Rome and begged at the church doors, doors the, the steps, to get money for the poor people. Okay. His father was mad, and then uh, finally he... Uh, had to renounce his father and all the patrimony. And the only thing at the end left was his cloth. Okay, that belonged to his father. You know what he did? He gave up that as well. He just walked. Yep. And then he began, and then people started going with him, listening to him. And then... Uh, he was praying in a church near Assisi, it's called Church of St. Damien. It's a small church at that time. And that's the, uh, the crucifix, it was actually an icon. Uh, he was able to see Jesus become alive on the crucifix and telling him, Francis, Francis, go and uh, fix my church that you can see the falling apart. So Francis believed, understood that Jesus was asking him to go and restore the churches. So first he restored that church. If you go there, you will see that small church inside a big basilica now. It's like a small church here, big church built around it. But, um, and then he also went around to you know, fix, restore many of the churches in the, in the neighborhood. And that's when he realized God was not just asking him to fix the buildings, but fix the church. My, you can see my church is so. He went around, of course, he started the, the friars of uh, uh, the poor and also a congregation for the women uh, with the help of St. Clair and then uh, uh, preached all over. So three things that is good for us. Again, even now, his congregation is all over the world and still trying to fix the, uh, the, the church, you know, through their preaching, through their life, and then uh, three simple things. Number one, based on the gospel, the life of Jesus, Francis was able to see him different. A different perspective of yourself. Based on the gospel, based on the life of Christ, he was able to find, look at him a different way. He was a very wealthy man with all the power and everything. He had a different plan of, but all of a sudden he embraces Jesus. Embracing Jesus in a different way, number one. Number two, he, one day he was walking at the time, a leper came, actually he went and kissed the leper and asked the leper to kiss him. You know, at that time, you usually run away from a leper. And that he continued and reaching out to help the poor. He would go and beg and then the, the, the congregation that he founded does the same thing in many ways. And then, uh, so, a different perspective of on others. You see yourself in the light of Christ, the light of Gospels, that's going to transform you, 
a different perspective. And also based on that, you try to see others. And in them you see Jesus. And while serving them, you are serving Jesus. The third thing, he could actually preach to birds and animals. He was a big friend of birds and animals. He's actually a patron saint of animals too. So the, the birds and everyone will come there and sit. Whenever you see an image of or a statue of Francis, you will see a dove or something, right? Yeah. So he could actually preach and they would stay there. That's what they say. I don't know how much that is. But anyway, so the, 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 the point is, in the creation, in all the living realities, or the entire universe, everything, he was able to see the presence of God. So, you, you look, you, uh, you see have a different perspective on yourself. And based on that, you see others in a different perspective. And the entire universe and everything created praises the glory of the creator. So, that's why he has a great prayer, the, the, the peace prayer of Francis, which basically takes into account everything. So, you see the life in a different view. The entire universe, God and everything created, come under one umbrella. And you, others, and the nature all work together. We thank Almighty God for our life and blessings and we ask him to give us the grace so that we may continue to see Jesus in others. For the church, may the Holy Spirit provide courage and strength so that all may respond fully and faithfully to Christ's call of discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the greatest respect for life from conception through natural death, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer because of their allegedness to Jesus, may God instill them the fire to continue bearing witness to the gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For members of this worship community, may the grace of God help us to follow in the footsteps of saints such as Francis of Assisi. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, may Jesus Christ bring them to eternal life. Have the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of Jim and Julie Peck, who, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's offer our own prayers. We fly to thy protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin.
pray for this and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father as we bring you these offerings o lord we pray that we may be rightly disposed for the celebration of the mystery of the cross which saint francis so ardently embraced through christ our lord the lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the lord our god it is truly right and just our duty of salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god through christ our lord for us on the festival of saint francis of assisi you bid your church rejoice so do you strengthen her by the example of his holy life teach her by his words of preaching and keep her safe in answer to his prayers so with the company of angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim You are indeed holy Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of faith for as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope shona our bishop and all the clergy Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy welcome them into the light of your face how mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed virgin mary mother of god with blessed joseph her spouse blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and from by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously Grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, through these holy gifts which we have received, that, imitating the charity and apostolic seal of St. Francis, we may experience the effects of your love and spread them everywhere for the salvation of all, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits, who prowl through the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>